From the Journal of Aphromus Long Journey Pilgrim With notes by Avos Tor, scholar of Reeve Library Rock Day, 15th cycle, 7th year, 81st turn Evening, 13th day in the trees The weather cooled considerably today It was not cold, but nor was it very warm it changed very abruptly, and when it did, so too did the trees. They are tall and twisted, like all trees I have seen in this place. But unlike all other trees I have seen, they do not have leaves. They have long green needles. Occasionally I see what looks like a pineapple made from wood peeking out of a cluster of these needles. Their bark looks grey and leprous. Note, conifers. Possibly firs of some kind. We are camped in a copse by the path. Suja is sporting with small furry animals that run up and down the trees. They have grey fur and bushy tails. So far, they have eluded her. Occasionally, one will scold her from a perch in the branches above. Note, I suspect these are squirrels, a creature not too dissimilar from Falskri. Unlike the Falskri, squirrels do not sing, nor are they inclined to discuss the finer points of wind instruments. I did see one larger animal today. It was something like the horses in the Digero ride, but was more slender and gracile. Its fur was brown, lighter on its underside. It had two horns on its head, but the strangest horns I had ever seen. They split into many smaller points, like tree branches. I half expected to see leaves sprouting from it. Unfortunately, before I could get a better look at it, the wind shifted and it caught our scent. With a leap, it bounded away into the underbrush. I wish I could have seen more of it, for it truly was a beautiful animal. Note, deer are fairly common in the Ravel Woods. There are more than 60 species catalogued, from the swamp-dwelling chameleon deer to the carnivorous blood deer. The specimen Aphromas saw was a buck, but I cannot place the species. After I made camp, I studied the book further. There are occasional words I can make out, but frustratingly little. What is any of it supposed to mean? Why was it left in our campsite? There must have been a reason. If it was simply rubbish being thrown away, then there are surely better ways to do so than sneaking into a stranger's camp like a thief. Frustrated by the book, I examined the beads further. So far as I am able to tell, they are nothing more than a decoration. The rattle seems no different than a Conlin's toy, save for the feathers tied to it. What makes them so important? Perhaps I am simply reading too much into it. Perhaps it was someone's idea of a joke or a strange sort of charity. I suppose, with my robes in such disrepair, I must look like a beggar. Still, I find it unsettling that they were left without my knowledge. <laughs>